A wireless shooting grip is a useful accessory for any vlogger or really any kind of videography work. And today we're going to be looking at the Sony GP-VP-T2-B-T. A classic in the long line of Sony naming conventions which are way too long. It's like a randomly generated password from a password manager, how ridiculous the naming convention is. But here it is, I'm just going to be calling it the Sony Grip for the duration of this video because I'm not reading that out every time. And this grip allows you to film yourself as well as having lots of other functionality. But is one worth buying? Let's find out. So it weighs in at 215 grams and can take a weight of 1.5 kilograms, which if you use an APS-C camera such as the ZV-E10, which weighs around 350 grams, then you'll have no issues at all even using a larger lens. You'll also be able to use this grip with Sony full frame cameras, even with some larger lenses. You just have to check the weight isn't going over 1.5 kilograms. It probably still will take it, but it's not advertised as being able to carry more than 1.5 kilograms. And unfortunately, this grip is only fully compatible with a small range of cameras, mostly the more up-to-date Sony cameras. So from the Sony APS-C cameras, that's the Sony A6100, the A6400, and the A6600, and the Sony ZV-E10, which you will see me using it with today. It's also compatible with plenty of the Sony full-frame cameras. I'll leave all of those up on the screen now, just so you can check whether yours is compatible. And it is also compatible with the Sony ZV-1, their kind of travel vlogging camera, which preceded the Sony ZV-E10. So this grip really is designed for newer cameras with Bluetooth capabilities. But now let's have a look at what you get in the box. So the contents is pretty straightforward in the box. You get the button battery with it, which so far I haven't had to replace, so that's good news. Also comes with a drawstring carry pouch. Then in the bubble wrap is the grip. You can see here the function buttons on the front. And also here is a quick look of what it looks like set up as a tripod. So let's now take a closer look at the grip and its functionality. On the top is the camera mount, well designed as turning this wheel here tightens and loosens the camera. You don't have to spin either the camera or the grip to get it to tighten up, it's just a handy little feature more tripods really should have this kind of thing on them. This button here allows you to flip the direction of the camera, which feels pretty sturdy and has a satisfying click. You'd use this when swapping the camera from a vlog position to a forward facing camera position. You can also adjust the angle of the grip with this button. So to the function buttons, you've got a photo button, which is pretty self explanatory, but you can half press this to gain focus like the main shutter button on the camera. I wasn't expecting this to be honest and it's quite a handy little feature because it means that you can really use it to get autofocus, things like that, which you might not necessarily have expected from a device like this. And the movie button unsurprisingly starts recording video. There's a zoom button which will zoom using the power zoom. If you're using a power zoom lens such as the Sony 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens. For non-power zoom lenses, then you can set the digital zoom by setting the zoom range option in the camera's menu to allow clear or digital image zoom. Obviously you will, lose, you will lose quality by doing this as it is not physically zooming in, but it is an option if you still want to be able to use that. And it also has a C1 function button. This will be mapped to whatever you have the C1 button mapped to in your camera's setting. So for me, I use it to activate my live streaming mode on my camera, which is great for when I'm using my camera as a webcam. But of course, that can be mapped to whatever function you use the most. Another handy little thing to have, though I think in an ideal world, I'd have another couple of those function buttons on there as well. But it's still nice for it to be there. And the final button is the lock switch, which means that you can lock in your settings. This stops you from accidentally pressing record or changing the zoom when you don't want to. Pretty handy, standard kind of feature to have on a device like this. On the back, you can see here is the battery compartment, which just pops open. You have to open these two clasps together, but it just means there's no chance of that opening up and the battery falling out. It's a pretty sturdy plastic that it's made from. It suits the style of the ZV-E10 quite nicely and the legs feel like they are very secure. It's got a 
quite a smooth but solid motion to them opening. And when you use it as a tripod, the camera does sit on there very securely. I don't feel like there's any chance of it buckling under the weight, but there is a little annoyance I have with the tripod, which I'll talk about in a little bit. As a grip, it's very lightweight and pretty comfortable to hold. I mean, there's no extra padding or anything, but there's this little bit here where you can kind of rest your finger while you are using it. So yeah, from a kind of comfort point of view of you using that with a camera mounted on, it's not, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel spectacular, but it's pretty comfortable. But seeing as it opens up to be tripod as well, it's understandable that it isn't the most comfortable thing in the world. And if you're enjoying this review and you'd like to see more like it, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on this video. And you can see in my review of the Sony ZV-E10 camera here that I was using this grip quite a lot while trying out the vlogging capabilities of this camera. So overall, with a bit of hands-on with this grip, it is fairly decent for vlogging. The only issues I had was my arm getting a bit tired if I was using a large lens. It's perfectly fine with a lens such as the kit lens and probably even the 16 mm Sigma that I'm using here. However, I did try for a little while vlogging with the Sony 18 to 105 lens, which was far too heavy, though to be fair, that certainly isn't a lens designed for vlogging. But worth bearing in mind, it will start to weigh down your arm quite a lot if you're using heavier lenses. Now, talking of heavier lenses and the issues that I was talking about before when using this grip as a tripod is that you do need to be aware that the tripod is very front heavy. And what I mean by that is that if you are using a larger lens, such as the Sony 18 to 105, then it is prone to kind of leaning forwards, if not falling forwards onto the lens, if you are not careful. If the camera's more leaned back on the tripod, this is less likely to happen, but facing straight forward, then I do notice that it is starting to pull the weight forward. This is a big shame really, because a lot of the time I do want to use this grip with a larger lens such as the 18 to 105, and it makes me not want to use it with a lens like that. So if you definitely think you're gonna be using a bigger lens and using this grip in tripod mode, it's definitely something worth bearing in mind. A useful thing though to point out about this grip is that it can be pretty much purely used as a remote control. When I'm using my Sony ZV-E10 as a webcam and I'm not using it on the grip, then I can use it from afar to zoom in, zoom out, start recording, or activate the function button without it actually being connected. As it uses Bluetooth, it doesn't need to be physically connected to the camera. This is quite a handy feature of this grip, which I wasn't anticipating I'd be using it for, but I do use it for this fairly often. So let's talk about the price of this grip, and unfortunately, it is not particularly cheap. Brand new, they are listed at around $140, £120, but it's definitely worth looking out for if you can get it cheaper than that. I paid around £90 for it new, so worth looking out for a good deal on one of these if you are interested. But I will also leave Amazon links in the description if you do want to pick one of these up. So definitely disappointing on how expensive it is, but it's still worth considering if you are looking for an all-round tool. And this is definitely how I use the grip. It's basically an all-in-one mini tripod grip and remote control. Now, if I was going to buy each of those individually, of course they would be cheaper, but it'd be three things to carry around. And if I was buying good quality of all three of those, then it would be possibly even more expensive. It's not the best tripod in the world, but if you're around traveling, if you're gonna be using your camera as a webcam or something like that, and you've just got a laptop with you, it's pretty great for that kind of purpose. As a vlogging arm, I found it perfectly adequate. It's not really my forte. I don't do a lot of vlogging, but for the bits that I've done, I can't imagine needing to use anything else. And it's great that it's got those function buttons on because a lot of the time when if you're just using a Gorillapod or something like that to vlog with, obviously you don't have those buttons controlled to start and stop recording, take a quick photo or whatever else you need to do. And the remote control feature of it is great. Just being able to operate the camera from afar is very useful, though in an ideal world, I would have a few extra features on there, maybe something like stop motion mode or just a few extra buttons to make it really feel like a remote control. Obviously, in an ideal world, especially for this price, it would have a more comfortable grip. It would be a little bit more of a sturdy tripod. And in an absolute ideal world, though, there was no way it would be this cheap. It would also have stabilization kind of gimbal features to it as well. But I think that's asking for a little bit too much for a product of this price. So for me, I'd be looking to pick one of these up if those kind of features feel beneficial to you. I certainly like to be able to go out and about with just a camera and this small grip and I don't really need any extra equipment for all sorts of different shooting situations. Very handy from that point of view. But obviously it does have its limitations and that high price point.
Do you use a grip with your camera? Do you even use this one? Let me know in the comments below. But if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. But until next time, see ya.